So thanks for tuning in. We've got our 3.4 weighted mean. And again, this should be viewed uh, directly after the 3.3 trimmed mean. So in a weighted mean, we have to consider the fact that some values are going to be worth more than others. Uh, let's think of our grade 11 math course. Usually, when I teach it, I spend about three weeks looking at stats. However, I only spend about one week looking at taxes. So when you're calculating a mark, should those two be worth the same? My argument is that's not, right? We spend more time on stats. It should be worth more or weighted more than the unit on taxes. So what we're trying to do is trying to calculate a mean that shows more importance or higher weighting on some values compared to others. So there's a few things you have to do here in order to calculate a weighted mean. First of all, you have to figure out what my weights are going to be. And weights are usually numbers. Number of students. It's my total. It's the amount. And the average is usually what we would call um, their mark. How much each is worth. So how many we have and their value. So we'll take the weights and multiply by the averages. We'll get a bunch of answers here. We're going to add up all the totals. And then we have to divide by my total weights. So weights times average, add them up to get a total. And then divide by my total weighting. Let's take a look at an example here. Calculate the weighted mean for the following data set. In David's class, there are 15 boys. Well, that's a count and 20 girls. So here we have my weights, 15 boys and 20 girls. The boys average is 75% and the girls average is 90%. So what most people would think to do is just simply take my two averages, add them up, and divide by two. But of course that's incorrect. The girls are more important because they have more than the boys in this case. So the girl's average of 90 is going to be worth more than the boy's average of 75. So let's look at how this would actually play out. I'm going to start by writing out my categories, boys and girls. So I get my weights. How many boys do I have? Well, I've got 15 of them. How many girls do I have? Well, I've got 20. I'm going to times this by the averages. So the boy's average was 75. Now I could change to a decimal if I wanted to, but for a weighted mean, we can keep it as a percent. And I'll times the girls 20 by their average of 90. So I can go pull up my trusty calculator and go 15 times 75, and I will get 1,125. I'm going to take the girls of 20, times it by their average of 90, and I should get 1,800. So step one was to take the weights and times it by the average. Done. Step two is add the totals. So here are my totals. Combine them. That's a 5, that's a 2, a 9, and a 2. 2,925. Finally, I'm going to divide this number by my total weights. Well, what's my total weighting? 15 boys, 20 girls is 35. So I take my 2,925. I divide by my total weights, which is 35, and I get an answer of 83.571 to two decimal places will give me 83.57%. So in this case, the girls average of uh, 20 girls average of 90, that's going to bring my mean higher because I've got more girls than boys. If we flip to our assignment now, we've got questions 1, 2, 3, and 4. But before we do that, I do want to take a quick comment about a GPA. In question 4, you have to calculate a grade point average. 
GPA. When you get to schooling outside of high school, your mark is based on letter grades of A's, B's, C's, and D's, so on. So, on. so if I get an A on an assignment or a course, that's going to equate to a number to an average of 4.0. A B would equate to an average of 3.0. C, 2.0. And a D is 1.0. Now, in post-secondary education, there is no such thing as an E grade, so I can't get an E grade. But if I was to get an F, my, I'd be failing the course and my GPA would be zero. So if I get an assignment back or mark on a class of an A, my average would be considered 4. B would be 3. Now sometimes they'll go in between, and they'll go with a B plus. Well, what's in between 3 and 4? 3.5. Same thing with a C plus. That'd be 2.5. And a D plus would be 1.5. There is no such thing as an F plus either, so the lowest you can get is a 1. There is no such thing as minuses, so you can't get an A minus. Well, a minus would be the same as a B plus. So for question four, we're talking about a GPA. You're going to get credit hours to be your uh, weights, and you'll get your letter grades to be your averages. Questions one, two, three, and four, please.